Well, hello everybody. We're here to give you an update on our shutdown protocol here at uh, Spirit of Christ and also our plans for liturgical celebrations going forward. First of all, I do want to emphasize, because I've had a number of questions regarding this, I want to emphasize the fact that the, the President of the United States and the government authorities don't dictate our decision making. We take our decision making from the Archbishop of Denver and the guidelines of the Archdiocese of Denver. But those are taken, of course, from the national uh, recommendations and recommendations of medical personnel. So we just want to remind you of that. So when you hear on the news that so-and-so has said the churches can do this, just know that that is then filtered through the process and eventually comes down to us. So it doesn't happen immediately. But it is, of course, all taken into uh, account. I wanted to let you know, this is Wednesday, uh, June 3rd. And in planning for the weekend coming up, uh, the 6th and 7th of June, our immediate plan is to go to 100 people at Mass here in our church. That will mean every other pew will be used. This still allows for social distancing here in the church. Um, and of course, we still will you know, maintain the, the, the structure of how people are seated, how people arrive, how they leave Mass. So it's all that proper social distancing is in place. But we will increase the numbers to 100 starting this weekend. We won't use the Spirit Center for Masses because of the larger number here in the church for the immediate future. That may, of course, change as all of this changes daily. Trust me, it changes daily. We will uh, continue to evaluate things and then um, probably be used. And we will continue as well the, the parking lot uh, distribution of communion. That's went very well, and we encourage you in that, especially, especially our older folks that might be a little uh, uncomfortable going into group settings or don't want to be around a lot of people. The parking lot giving of communion after Mass is a, is a great option, and many people have benefited from that. So we'd encourage you in that as well. And just a reminder that that is at all Masses except the 7 o'clock Sunday morning Mass. Daily Mass um, will continue to function as normal. It will be here in the church 9 to noon. After June 12th, we will discontinue the noon Mass. Um, we feel that with getting 100 in for Mass at 9 o'clock, we'll take care of those needs. Also, um, we won't really do a sign-up for the daily Mass, so um, it won't be scheduled. So if you'd like to come, feel free to come. We will have to kind of watch the numbers, but if you arrive at a timely manner and would like to attend the 9 o'clock daily Mass, you're more than welcome to uh, starting next week. That is June 8th. Um, also, um, as far as the liturgical celebration that we have here at church, uh, all the guidelines that were in place before the shutdown all continue. That would mean no, uh, no sign of peace, no um, holding of hands during the Our Father, no receiving of communion on the tongue, no use of both species, but limiting to the single species of Mass. So all of those liturgical sort of protocols will remain and will be maintained. Um, what I guess we'd like to ask from you is, first of all, uh, patience and prayers for um, endurance and fortitude and courage for all of us. But we really have benefited from your support, and we're really grateful for that. And we've tried our best to, to bring to you all of the beauty, the, the celebrations of the church, and of course the sacramental life to the best of our ability. Um, it of course isn't what it was before, before the shutdowns occurred, but we feel like in the interest of keeping people safe, following the medical professionals' best advice and the dictates of our civil authorities, we are trying to maintain all of that. Um, I guess what we need from you, first of all, with going to larger numbers, it's going to entail a little extra um, necessity. One of them is we'd ask that our um, ushers, who've kind of been off the grid for a while, kind of come back on the grid, and that the ushers uh, sort of make themselves available, will work you in. Um, we don't have an offertory procession or offertory collection, so that ministry of the ushers is a little curtailed at this time. But the ushers would be of great help to help us just in traffic flow and in helping people be seated before Mass, just to help us be organized here within the church space. Um, so if the ushers would let Jeanette know of their availability or she would be calling you, that would be terrific. So that would be helpful to start. Also, one of the real strong necessities of this kind of a program is cleaning. And that means cleaning the church after every 
mass. Now stop and think, we have six masses on the weekend. The church has to be cleaned after every mass. It's a quick turnaround to get ready for the next mass. We, um, under, under the direction of our, our maintenance supervisor, Dave Dutton, we are maintaining that now, but with the larger numbers, that's gonna be a bit of a, big, bigger of an impact on our, on our personnel. So if you would like to help with that and help in that ministry, not on a regular basis, but every once in a while, that would be terrific as well. So if you could uh, let Dave uh, know in the parish office that you'd be available to help with that, that would be terrific. Also, with the also going to 100 and perhaps larger after that, we uh, also, our Eucharistic ministers, our extraordinary ministers have also been kind of in hibernation here for a while. If the extraordinary ministers also would uh, like to help us, because the larger numbers, communion needs to be facilitated uh, with more people helping out. So if you're an extraordinary minister and would like to help us, uh, again, let Jeanette know of your availability. We'd also like, and we have been struggling to come up with a great name for this, but we'd like to have a group of helpers, just people that are just make themselves available to help, to help us with traffic flow, to help us with organization, to help us, especially on the day of the Mass, and a, a particular Mass, to help beforehand, to help afterwards. There's a lot of moving parts. So if you'd like to be part of this helping group, um, for short term, it's not a long term commitment, of course. Again, call the parish office and just let us know if you'd like to help with that as well, and we'll get you involved. Um, we continue, for the short term, we'll continue the scheduling uh, protocol that we've instituted. Um, once we get to larger numbers beyond 100, the scheduling will have to change, that, that, that uh, protocol that we follow. But for now, the scheduling remains the same. Uh, utilize the parish website, utilize flock notes, utilize the bulletin, utilize all those, uh, you can even call the parish office, all those ways of letting us know uh, what you would like to do. Just to let you know, just from a helping you out point of view, and that is that, um, of course, of course, the 8.30 and 10.30 masses on Sunday are by far the most in demand. Um, if you'd be open to attending one of the lesser attended masses, 7 o'clock, 12.15, Sunday night perhaps, you would be more likely to get in more often and on a more timely manner rather than waiting on a longer list for 8.30 and 10.30. Just to let you know, that's just the way, the way human nature works. So, um, so please be aware of that as well. And like I said, we, uh, daily mass is not really uh, dependent on scheduling right now. If you'd like to attend daily mass, just come to mass in a timely manner. By timely manner, I mean come before mass starts. Don't come after 9 a.m. That makes it difficult with numbers and to make sure we're maintaining uh, the proper protocol. There's a few other things uh, just to let, make you aware of um, with the larger numbers. One is um, uh, communion will be facilitated in a, in a certain way that will be explained to you when you come to mass. Um, we can't really have communion lines, just to let you know. Also, um, when, when Mass is dismissed and when Mass ends, how you leave church will be in a designated manner. Everybody can't leave at once, it's not allowed. So we have to disperse in a careful manner. So all that will be explained as well. So just know that there are just some ways of doing things that are gonna be slightly different for you. Um, continue to uh, make yourself available to communication. Um, we've had a lot of phone calls in the office and that's fine. We're perfectly prepared to help out with them. But it's great if you can also um, go through the other communication channels and we'll continue to communicate with you, especially as things change. And that is one thing I have to emphasize. And just to, when you look at this video say, I'm gonna pray to, for Father Chris to maintain himself during this. But what I'm pointing out to you is that literally people, this changes daily. We are adapting all the time. Every day we're having a new conversation about something new coming up, a new protocol, a new plan. And, and here at Spirit of Christ, everything is big. Everything involves a lot of people and a lot of parts, so we can't do things easily, quickly. So just pray for us that day to day we are able to keep, keep adapting and keep re reflecting the, the reality of what's going on in the world but also the needs of our people and the spiritual needs, which are really truly essential, and, and we try to bring them to you to the best of, your ability, of our ability. So I guess I'd ask all of you to just continue to pray and continue to uh, hang together. 
we've heard all kinds of wonderful stories and accounts and we've we know that the fruits are there people are already seeing that and benefiting from that but we look forward to the day when when Spirit of Christ returns to normal and that's that's my prayer <laughs> and I continue to pray for that and I think you join me in that as well but until then we trust in the Lord we trust in his guidance and we know that he's leading us in ways that challenge us yes but also leading us to where we need to be we trust in God in that way and as St. Augustine always said you know everything in, in the world everything in life is is meant for God's glory so even difficult situations as we do today bring glory to God somehow and we have to trust in that as well so um, again uh, all of our best and uh, continue to keep in touch and continue to ask us of any needs you have in any way that uh, Father Adam or myself our deacons or our staff can help you we are more than welcome to do that so signing off and I uh, hope you do well and you'll probably be hearing from me again as we change our plan yet again in the probably the very near future so God bless you all <laughs>